Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing what I believe is my final round of patriotic DIYs for the season. Without anything further, let's get started with our first DIY. We're going to start with a couple of books, well three to be exact. I did pick these up from the Dollar Tree. If this is hard for you to see or do, then look away. Um, you can also use some from the thrift store. I've done book stacks that you do not tear the books at all. Um, but you know, if they're at the Dollar Tree and they don't sell there, they're, a lot of these just end up in the landfill. So I'm giving it new life. So we're going to pull off the um, cover and back and the cover on the spine as much as I can. And you'll see how we finish taking care of that. Now, I've made book stacks before, but here you can see it. We're doing it with some sandpaper. My sanding block had some paint on it, so I just wrapped um, a fresh piece of sandpaper around it. And we just gently sanded off the... Um, spine and just smooth that out. Now I've done book stacks before in various ways. I've done some where you're just covering them, but recently I saw my friend Kendra on Late Night Creations. I'll link her video. She did a book stack. It was also a patriotic book stack and I'm not totally mimicking hers, but um, I did get some good ideas from her. So I kind of put me in the mood to make another book stack. So we're going to glue these. I was showing you how um, some of them do not have a blank page. Um, I found that there's more blank pages in the back of the book than the front of the book when you, you know, tear off the cover. And so I was just arranging them so that there would be no words shown when we were done. So I'm just using some hot glue to attach these all together. I apologize if I sound, um, if it sounds different or congested. I am. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I guess a summer cold. I don't know. At first I thought it was from lack of sleep, but um, I don't know. I'm a little nasally sounding, so I apologize. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and put some Mod Podge on the top of this book on the paper. It will wrinkle just a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to come back to it and fix that up. Just make sure you get it all the way to the edges. You want to put a good coat, but don't drench it because the papers are thin and you could tear it. Um, just make sure you get all of the edges. And then once that dries, we will come back to it. So... If you haven't done Mod Podge this way, this is a great way to avoid getting wrinkles. So the Mod Podge is now dry and we're going to just cut out some paper. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I've also got bug bites on my arm. You might see that a few times. I got eaten alive by some bugs. Okay, so we're lining that up. I'm trying really hard to keep it in place because I wanted the pattern to be like, you know, straight up and down. And then we're putting a piece of parchment paper and an iron. You can use a heat press if you have that from like a Cricut or whatever. Um, I just use my iron and make sure there's no steam. And that reactivates the Mod Podge and we get a really nice smooth finish here. And then I let that cool because the paper was obviously a little bit soft and curling up a little bit initially when it was still warm. Once it was fully dry and the Mod Podge was back to being dried down, I just used a sandpaper, my sanding, goodness, my sanding block and did a gentle away motion to get off the excess paper. And then I'm using these transfers from Dollar Tree. I was deciding between the red, white, and blue and the Star Spangled Banner. I went with Star Spangled Banner. I've gone back and forth on how I feel about these rub-on transfers. I think my last video, I was like, oh, I really like these. And then I had trouble with them today, but I made them work. Um, you're just gonna scrape them on. These are more of a foil. Um, I don't know if you can see here, the S did not fully transfer and it was like smeared. So I couldn't add it. Um, anyways, I decided to continue on. I ended up piecing together another just piece from the transfer and filled in the S. I'll show you in a minute. But um, now I'm going in. I have a mixture of a couple of gray paints. You'll see this. I uh, used it in another DIY, and I'm just dry brushing over this. I started on the pages just to see. Um, I don't know. I wanted to make sure I didn't have too much paint on. You can see one side of the pages had some paint splatter because I left this in my work area while I was doing other stuff and I got paint on it. So I, was, I did kind of um, add on some pieces to the S and smooth that out. And I'm just dry brushing this. I wanted to dull down the gold and just kind of, you know, make it a little bit more rustic. The paper itself was pretty rustic looking. And now I'm just Mod Podging over this. I wanted to Seal in the transfers, which isn't always necessary, but these gold foil ones just felt like they needed a seal on them. And then I'm sealing the top too, which normally I do with Mod Podge. I really don't think it was necessary here, but I did it. 
And then um, I just took some twine, wrapped it around a couple of times, tied it in a knot, added on a bow. And um, yeah, that is it for the book stack. And I really do like how this came out. I um, I feel like I was able to dull down the gold a little bit. So it still looked rustic, even though it was metallic gold. Anyways, I love this book stack here. For our next one, I'm taking a sign from Hobby Lobby. This sign I'm showing you is I picked up for 99 cents on clearance. So I love to find um, things on Hobby Lobby clearance that I can do things with. And I first wanted to try to pull off this paper. Sometimes I just paint over items. Sometimes I try to take it all off. This is what I did this go around. So I realized that the top layer, I wasn't going to get it all, you know, just peeling it off. So I took a damp paper towel, let it sit, came back to it. Um, and this just softened up the glue. Now this white part here, this was still, was scraping off pretty easy because this was just the under layer. So I left the paper or the wet paper towel on for another couple of rounds, um, just dampened it and let it sit on the top layer. And then once the top layer came off, I did it again on the bottom layer. And I ended up getting a lot of this off. I'm just using a scraping tool. Um, I don't know. You can decide if this is a worthwhile step for you. I did not get the whole thing totally cleared off. I'm guessing maybe I could have if I had continued going with this process. Um, but I ended up going in with some sandpaper and finishing off to what I thought was good enough in the end. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It ended up working out great in the, in the end. So you can make your call how you want to handle it. Um, so you can still see there's a good amount there, but it was very, very smooth. So I didn't think I'd have any problems. I did kind of have some problems, but it all ended up getting covered up. So do with that information what you will. We're going to give this two coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I am going to do the top and the sides. I don't know if the sides had a paper on it. If it did, I did not take that off. So um, it all worked out in the end. You know, that's just kind of how I go with my DIYs. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I want to say welcome. I love sharing budget-friendly DIYs here on this channel. So I'd love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. If you can see there, you can see like the cracked, the paint cracked, and I'm guessing it's from what was underneath, but everything felt smooth. So I just continued on. So I mixed up some, uh, poured out some of those uh, elephant and silver lining paint is the color that I have from Wa um, Waverly. And I just was showing you because the background, we're using window clings and the background had a color and texture to it. And I really wanted it to blend in. So I started out, very minimal with the silver lining, pulling out, I think, a hair from my chippy brush. And I'm just kind of, I went light and then I layered. I ended up going pretty dark and pretty heavy, but I just wasn't sure. So I just kind of wanted to do a little bit at a time. And if I got it too dark in a spot, I went back with the light paint and I just kind of kept going back and forth. So I had what I liked. Um, you could just do a solid color too if you don't care about the edges of the window cling. I don't think it would look horrible, but. I don't know. This is just kind of what I went with. Plus the colors of the window cling were more muted. So I was going for a little bit of a darker look. And you see I mixed some um, Waverly Chuck Beat in the color Ocean with some Burnt Umber because again, I was going for a little bit more muted rustic color to match the window clings. And I taped off the front and I decided I wanted to, to paint all of the edges with the blue. And when that dried, I took the stencil, which is from Hobby Lobby, and we're going to stencil on some white stars. I decided that it would go best if I didn't try to do like a straight line across. I thought I might struggle with that. So I just did the smaller stars and I did random patterns um, all the way across. And I did this on all four of the sides. And I thought it added a nice added touch around, you know, just around the perimeter. You'll see that in the end. And now I'm using some Mod Podge to put our window clings. We're going to do this big truck window cling. And then I add on a few other pieces from it. Um, some smaller pieces. And I'm just doing a thin layer of Mod Podge on the back. Portions of this, I do it on the piece itself. Um, and then I just slowly, like, you, you have a little bit of wiggle room time here. I'm sliding it down, but you want to push out all of the air bubbles and then let it get tacky and a little bit dry before you Mod Podge over top. Otherwise, the window cling just continues to move around. Here I tried doing it more on the back and I was like, okay, I'm just going to put it on <laughs> the the sign itself. And I just 
worked my way across and then here I am adding on a couple little rockets and a couple stars. I just let my hands get messy and did it this way. Um, and then once that's all done and everything's kind of set in place, I do my podge over the whole thing. That helps um, hold it down, but it also helps kind of make the different textures blend in and hopefully not look like a window cling by going over the whole thing. I'm using Mad Pad Mod, Mod Podge in the matte finish. I'm sorry, guys. I don't feel 100%. I guess this is like a summer cold or something. I don't know. Um, I did Mod Podge the edges too just so that the paint wouldn't chip off when I was sitting on a shelf or something. But I really love how this came out. I thought it was really cute. It's like I said, it's a little bit darker, not as bright of a color, but I was trying to match the tone of the window clings, and I love the little star perimeter. So love that one as well. All right, I'm breaking out my miter box and saw I bought the, got this for Christmas, and I hadn't used it yet, and I'm finally using it. I was kind of intimidated. I didn't need to be. I'm showing you how the edge had a little bit of a lip that helps hold it still. Uh, the table here I'm showing you this in real time um, it didn't take long but I was kind of getting a feel for it and I'm going to cut down a dowel rod into three different sizes I didn't measure them I just made sure that they were different sizes but that didn't take too long that was like real time there um, still kind of getting used to getting my saw in and out of it but you can see I got a pretty clean cut we did smooth this out with our sandpaper and my first cut was definitely the roughest um, but used my sanding block once again to just smooth out those edges. And then this is the ocean with the burnt umber. Um, we're going to use that blue throughout, and I'm just going to paint the dowel rods in different colors. We're making little tiny like firecrackers. And I'm going to use crimson. I could have dulled this one down with some brown paint too. That might have been a good idea, but I go over it and kind of um, dry brush at the end anyway. And I use my heat gun just to dry it so that I could use the, you know, pull the other end and do the other side. But I'm going to do red, white, and blue. I don't show you the white because you guys know how to paint. So, um, but I did want to show you that's how I did it. If you don't have a heat gun or a hair dryer, just set it down and when it dries, come back to it. But I was using my heat gun. On the white one, I took this little fire, well, I guess it's firecracker, firework, rocket, I don't know off of the gold transfers and applied that one and I thought that was a kind of a nice little addition and we're going to Mod Podge all of these um, once again just to kind of seal the paint in so that it doesn't um, you know chip off when you're doing stuff with it. I don't know. Um, and now I'm using a chippy brush and some burnt umber. I got a little heavy on the red than I heavier than I planned to but I just kind of <laughs> smeared it with my hands and um, you know, sometimes I do this a little bit more proper, and sometimes you just kind of go with it. Did that out on all of them, and now, so I wanted to poke a hole in. I don't have a little hand drill, um, so here's a way to do it without power tools. I'm just using my tiny scissors, um, and I'm poking a hole in. I don't need it super deep, and when I opened, I was going to use some jute twine that's wired, um, but I had this, um, I think it's called berry garland. From Dollar Tree and I was like oh that would kind of work good like I took off the berries but anyways it was unraveling a little bit so I used some hot glue and just used my finger protectors to kind of smooth that down and we're gonna make this our little um, is it called the wick I don't know what it's called on the firecracker um, but we're gonna use this so put a little dab of hot glue in the hole and kind of wedge that in there um, and it's got the wire, so it's going to keep the shape, and I just kind of um, twisted it and bent it. And then at this point, I cleaned up all my paintbrushes, but I had a little bit of paint still sitting there. So I used a paper towel and just brushed on the burnt umber on the wick just to kind of cover up any of the hot glue and just, I don't know, make it look better to me. And then I hot glued the three together and took a little bit of twine wrapping around it. And I think this is really cute. I seen an idea out there somewhere and I've been wanting to make this but I was intimidated to use my saw. I'm glad I used it. I, it wasn't difficult at all and um, this is going to be a really cute addition to my tiered tray. Um, I've seen these little things made all sorts of shapes and sizes but I thought using the doll rod was a nice way to make a mini one for the tiered tray. Next up I have this palette sign. So this is just one of those palettes from the Dollar Tree. I've already taped it off. We're going to make a simple flag. This is not 
complicated, but I'm going to use crimson for our red stripes, and then um, we will paint the other ones just with some white. My head keeps getting in the way, which causes it to come out of focus. Um, I did want to also add, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a simple way to help support me. And um, yeah, let's YouTube know that you're digging what I'm doing. Let's me know that you're digging what I'm doing. And um, the likes and the comments make YouTube more likely to share my video with others because they think if you're enjoying it, that other pe people might as well. So here I am doing the white stripe as well. Let me know down in the comments. Oh, real quick, I took a wood star from my, this was a Hobby Lobby pack for painting that white as well. Let me know down in the comments if you decorate for 4th of July, or I like to do my patriotic stuff through all of summer, but I'm just curious, or do you not decorate with any red, white, and blue at all? Um, okay, so now I'm going in with more of that blue paint mixture that I made, and we're going to paint the top part here. And then I wanted to sand it down, and it was dry at this point, but I somehow got like a white scuff on the blue. But we're going to rough it up a little bit with our sandpaper, and then I did just put on some more blue paint. You can see it's kind of wet there, or just touching that spot up. And we're going to go in with the chippy brush with a little bit of that burnt umber. I didn't want the stark brightness. I wanted all of my DIYs to kind of go together so I could feel free to use them together if I needed to. And then I was like, okay, I need to speed up drying that little spot so I could add some more um, of the brown paint. And then we're just hot gluing our star on here. And that is all for this DIY. Very simple. Once again, it would be great in a tear tray, but would also be kind of great in a little um, collection, of, in a little display. Those are the words I'm looking for. Guys, sorry for my voice, sorry for my brain fog today, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.